Hey guys, another video again. And this time, finally again a video about my tube tester, Redest. One of the most advanced, if not even the most, the advanced tube tester existing at the market at the moment. But what I will show you today it is nothing new. It is something that uh, comes from a request of a couple of viewers. They were interested in this part here, the top of the cover that I made, because this thing has quite some electronics under it, and it shows me optically if the uh, voltage on the external 9 and 10 pins that is mostly either the two anodes or the anodes or grid or something from high voltage tubes like that. This is, for example, connected on external 10 on pin 10. And these 9 and 10 pins here carry a voltage that is greater, larger than 30 volts or less than 30 volts. If it is less than 30 volts, it's safe to touch it. Everything that is over that is too high. So at the moment green means safe to touch, but if I start the test, then you will see that this thing will get red. By the way, this is my version of the red test that I made. It is, there are quite some changes that I made. For example, the socket box receiver here is made from PCBs and aluminium uh, profiles. I will show you in a jiffy. But now let me show you what I mean when I start this thing. Now the test is started and you see that the EXT10, that's the anode, this thing here, has at the moment 300 volts. And of course this connector here. So this is why I made it, because I want to know if I really have still have a voltage and higher voltage on the connectors or on the, on the socket themselves, and not just rely that the program tells me the relay is on or off. It's getting warmer. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? That's for the, f for the season, the Halloween season. Anyway, let me show you how this thing looks inside and what exactly I did. So, let me show you how this thing looks from the inside. Let's take the screws off. A better setup for the camera to show these things when I when I open stuff. I never did that before, so this is why uh, I don't like that. Let's take another screwdriver. Okay, let's take the last one, the big one, the big Berta one. That's it. And the last screw that will not make us any issues. Like that. So, you ready? Da 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 da! Oh, that's hot. Why is it hot? How can that be hot? Why? What is hot here? Nothing can be hot. Okay. So. This is how it looks. This is the inside. It's quite a lot of stuff. But let me take it apart and I show you the schematic and we go through what exactly I did. Before I show you the PCB, I want to show you the inside of this thing and what I did. Better like that, yeah. As you can see here, I'm using P 
PCBs for the four side for this socket box receiver instead of a plastic box that was primarily planned and I'm using four uh, aluminium profiles threaded for the top itself. I have here, for example, uh, I don't know if you will see it. Um, let's see, is that, is that not connecting correctly? Okay, and that's it. I have an additional 12 volt power supply just for providing the power for any additional uh, socket boxes that perhaps need an external power. First, I thought I will use the power uh, of the relay rail. This is this one that I didn't use at the end. So it is a dedicated one that I'm using. And this here is nothing else than the high voltage uh, connector to the PCB to this here from pins from the high voltage pins 9 and 10. So this is how it looks. This is the PCB itself. It's, it consists of quite a few sections. This is the input section of the power supply that 15 or 12 volts, but I wanted to use a 12 volt rail of the relays, but I decided to use the additional PCB, the additional power supply that I put inside the red test. We have a so, um, polarity protection diode. We have a 15 volt TVS that just cuts everything that is over 15 to 17 volts that comes that would come from the relay um, rail, you know, closing, opening the relays, uh, the coils, switching the coils, etc. This is the fit, and then a 100 milliamp. fast blow fuse that protects not this circuit. I'm not interested if that burns or not, but it protects the internal PCB, the uh, relay rail in case that here something happens and there is a dead short. For example, this capacitor here, this tantalum capacitor. If it shorts and without a 100 milliamp fuse, I would have problems. So, and I don't want to open it and to have to, 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 to completely dismount it to repair the main PCB. Anyway, let's continue. After that, we have a five volt regulator from the 15 volts or 12 volts that come from here. A TL431 that generates 2.5 volts. Then we have here the high voltage input with a dedicated high voltage connector. This connector is used mostly, or I see it mostly, in CCFL uh, converters for LCD backlighting. Then we have a resistive divider with one upper high voltage 3.7 kilovolt rated 33 mega ohm resistor and the lower leg is a 1206 SMP part. Again, both midpoints of the resistive divider are protected with 5 volt TVS that easily could clamp it to 5 to 7 volts in case that the lower leg of the resistive divider for some reason dies. Because these resistors here are 33 max, even at 600 volts, we have only microamps that go through. This is absolutely no problem for these two DVSs to clamp to 5 or 7 volts. After that, we have a dual comparator, uh, 393 that compares the output of this um, 
of this reference again through a resistive divider. I think this is here, but you see, I will show it to you in, uh, in the schematic that makes 150 millivolts. And this is calculated like that, that if the voltage is higher than 30 volts, it should trigger one of the two LEDs that you see here. That's all. And these are anti-parallel LEDs inside this three millimeter package that if the voltage is lower 30 volts, it's green. If the voltage is higher, it is red. This is how it looks. And I wanted that to not just have an on off. So for example, red or nothing on the LEDs, but that it monitors if it is the whole thing working or not. Because if the system would die here, I wouldn't know. And I would see, okay, the LED is not lighting. Ah, no problem, let's touch it. No. This is why I used in. If there is no voltage or voltage that is less than 30 volts, it is green. There is no situation here that I will not see any indication. It is, will be always either green or it will be red. The only problem that can happen is that I lose this connector, but this thing is not moving. So I don't expect this to be had to happen. So let's go through the schematic. Let's start the schematic with the power supply itself. I don't know if I can show you both, I will try. Okay, I hope this will work. That's the input of the 12 volts or the 12 volts of the relay uh, rail. Reverse polarity protection for just in case. TVS for spikes that are over 15 to 17 volts. 100 milliamp fast blow, uh, last resort protection in case that this thing here dies to not destroy anything on the main circuit. And this is this part that you see here. Then we have the TL431 again with a a resistor divider that divides it down to 150 millivolts. This is the, let's say so, the break-even point between lower, so upper over 30 volts and less than 30 volts. Everything that is less or equal that is 30 volts or less. Everything that is higher than that, it is higher than 30 volts. Yeah, by the way. This is how it looks. Then we have that's to, the, resi the resistor divider, the input divider. As I said, two TVSs that clamp down, five volt TVSs that clamp down five to seven volt in case that a, something catastrophic happens with these two resistors and all the 600 volts would go to the electronics will be clamped from that and it is easy to clamp because it's 33 meg ohms high voltage resistors that will clamp it down to microamps and that's not a problem at all for that the design idea the design goals there are, were two goals first of all safety this is why i used red and green leds and not just a red led and either it is on or off. Because if I lose power from this circuit, as I said before, I'm not seeing anything anymore. And I had to rely and to hope. So green, everything that is less than 30 volts, even zero or nothing connected, and red, everything that is over that. We have here one of the comparators. I 
just for safety reasons, for the sake of non-oscillation, provided a resistor that would uh, introduce an hysteresis, so that if I had oscillation, this would damp it. Yeah, and this is the whole thing. The second goal that I had when planning that, designing that, was to not load the measure circuit, the anode or the grid or anything uh, of the ray test itself. So even at 600 volts here, with this resistive divider, would draw 18 microamps or less. That's nothing. So if I see plus minus 20 or 30 microamps on uh, on high power and on, 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 on tubes, this is nothing that is in the, not in the on the anode and not on the grid two or not on the second anode. So this makes no false. This is not falsifying the results. What I wanted to say. So this is the schematic. In case that anybody wants it, with all the design files, is available. Again, this is how it looks. Of course, black is a not a very easy color. You see everything that you touched from the oily fingers. But I assure you that my fingers are not oily. But still, the oil from the skin, the little oil from the skin, the fat, you see it immediately. Guys. Please don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you like what you see. Uh, please subscribe my channel and press the notification button. This helps me a lot to bring you more content like this and much other themes. We will continue now again watching how the tube is going to light up and some uh, dark magic uh, for the Halloween season. Let's continue. Okay, and now let's see how such a tube and EL519 glows in the dark. Let's start it. On the right, on the lower right side, you see immediately that we have an anode voltage. Of course, I didn't connect the anode at the moment, but just to show. Let's go a little bit more here, yeah, like that. And it starts to glow. Isn't that nice? This is for the Halloween season and a little bit more. So guys, thank you for watching. If you like what you see, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, press the notification button. See you. Have a nice Halloween. And let's end this video with a little glowing magic of the nostalgic glowing magic of a nice tube. The spooky season. A PL519 glowing in the dark. Scary. Ooh. Doesn't that look good? Look at that.